So there's no natural serial number for it? No, when they, when they had the accident on the stairs and broke the neck, the neck broke from this corner to the nut. And of course this part fell away. Uh -huh. So when they got it back off the stage, some of the machine heads were missing. And a lot of people took a grab at what they could have from the stage when they fell on the stage. So Sam Lee of London decided that instead of trying to replace the whole neck, you obviously cut it in the middle, or just two thirds up, and replaced and made a new headstock and top part of the neck and grafted it on to the original. Oh, yeah. And yeah. as you can see, yeah. here's the join. Yeah. And when I first got the guitar, all this was done cherry red. It's obviously he had sprayed a cherry red. He didn't bother with this, he just sprayed it up to here. But since 1976, it's all worn away again due to just wear. And it's never moved. It's still as perfect as the day it was uh -huh. made. So did you, did you actually know the original serial number? I it? did not. No. There's a bit of a conjecture. Is this a 59 or is this a 58? But we don't know because mm. we haven't got the number. But I just assume it's a 58. But I might be, I might be wrong. It's got the chunky neck. Yeah, it's got a nice, and, nice, chunky neck. And it's it's faded away quite nicely on the on the front. Yeah. Not as much as some of them, but uh, he obviously used to take liberties with his guitar, didn't he? I mean, well, a few times I believe he had fallen over on stage with it. Uh -huh. um, due to his uh, certain physical condition on some of the yeah. gigs he was on. But really, people in those days didn't have the respect or the awe that they've got for the guitars now because it was just a working beast then and they thought they could go into any shop and go and buy a new one. Yeah, true. And it wasn't till later on they realised how untrue that statement was and, and how cherished the guitars should be. Well, that's been a great insight. Thanks for that, Arthur. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it plays really good, it still sounds fantastic. Of course, uh, we've just been playing with small amplifiers, but when you can stick it into the big Marshall stack and turn it up, that's when it really I really, en I really enjoyed seeing when you were on stage at the sound check with Joe Bonamassa in, at Newcastle, and uh, Joe picked it up and, you know, Plugged yeah, it into he his really in, got something up with it. In, into the rig in a big hall through a big system and yeah. I mean Joe's just a, a great exponent. I mean of the on bus. the evening of the gig, I wasn't available to to see him perform it because I was uh, working myself. But people came up the next day and said, "Oh, I, I saw Joe Bonamas at the, at the city hall and he was playing the guitar that you own, uh, the Kosov guitar," and said it just sounded absolutely fantastic. But he's such a great player. He knows what he wants out of these Les balls, and he's achieved such great sounds. I was so pleased that he he, was, he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was when the guitar was down at Haydock, and the the Pete Green uh, guitar was playing, and the Exile of Keith Richards and your guitar playing, but. Um, I had so many people came to me afterwards and they said of the three guitars they thought and it was my view too that the, 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 the Kossoff burst um, in Phil's Harris's hands sounded absolutely the, the best. It was okay. it was good. It's hard to it's it's hard to say because they've all got the merits, but yours yours came over. Maybe just Phil was more relaxed playing your guitar, but it came over really good. Excellent. <laughs>